Welcome to a short video. I'm going to show you how I made this spherical clock using my homemade sphere turning jig. Hope you enjoy it and find it useful. To make this clock I'm going to use a 4 inch cube of beech. This came off a 12 inch by 4 inch square spindle blank so it's a third of the spindle blank. I'm going to treat it as if it was a ball blank. So I'm going to mount it cross grain um, because when I put the clock in I find it uh, looks a lot better with the, uh, the clock face in the, the cross grain, one of the cross grain sides. So what I'm going to do first is mount this between centres, turn it round and then I'm going to put a tenon on one end of it so I can hold it in the chuck. Remounted the piece in the chuck. What I'm going to do now is just square off this end and then I'll drill the hole for the clock insert. I'll do this initially with the fastener bit and then just widen it slightly to the right side using a box scraper. Put a slight chamfer in towards the uh, the hole, so when the clock sits on here, it will sit on the outer face, and it's make sure the edges don't sit proud. What I'm now going to do is just sand this face because it's easiest to do at this stage. Although we will be turning some of it off, it's a lot easier to do now. The next stage is to mark out where the centre line of the sphere is going to be. <coughs> so I've put the clock insert in and I've drawn another line that's 5mm out from the clock insert and that gives the flat surface that we don't want to go beyond from the, the point of view of the, uh, uh, the sphere. So we'll take the clock insert out. <coughs> Diameter of the pencil circle there is 78mm. Diameter of the blank is about 96 millimetres. So I'm going to show you on this picture. So I've got a circle here that will represent the sphere and I've drawn this line which is this face on the on the blank to intersect, intersect with the sphere when we've got a radius of 38 millimetres. You can then measure across from that face to the centre line of the sphere is going to be 28 millimetres. So if I mark from this face, <coughs> and that will be the centre line of the sphere. It's obviously off offset on the blank because of the fact that we've already cut away, effectively cut away some of this part of the sphere. We can then mark the other extent 
of the sphere, so at 96.48. So this second line here is the furthest side of the sphere, and this area here is some scrap wood that will turn away. Now I'm going to use a homemade sphere jig to turn the sphere, which I'll go through in a minute. I'll be turning the blank around and mounting it on this set of abdominal drawers using the uh, recess for the clock to hold it while I turn the sphere. Now these abdominal drawers allow me to turn this section of the sphere whilst it's uh, up against the chuck. If you're using the normal set of drawers you may not be able to do that so you may want to turn this side of the sphere first then turn it round so you can turn that side of the sphere. This is the jig I'll be using based on a design by David Springer in Wood Turning Wizardry book. Um, I've just altered it slightly. It's been made of MDF. Uh, I'll probably make another one at some time. I find that the upright in the MDF flexes very slightly so I'll probably uh, make another one with some ply when I've got some offcuts at the right size. So basically it's a base that sits on the lathe bed. I've got a block underneath here that pulls up tight against this bed to make sure the centre is aligned. I've got two blocks that go underneath and tighten up to lock it in position. This section rotates and I have a bit that will go in it. This is a standard metal lathe bit uh, that I've just, high speed steel uh, bit that I've just shaped at the end and that slots in through here. and can be held in place by this knob here. So I'll turn the piece round and then set the jig up and start turning the, uh, the sphere. I've turned most of the scrap wood away from the end of here. Set the jig up so that the central pivot point is lined up with where the centre of the sphere will be. I'm going to turn this section first as you remember we have a line on this face that I want to go down to so we'll turn it until we get there and hopefully that should be roughly about the, this line if it's not then we'll work from wherever the turned piece comes to and the way we'll do this is we take very light cuts and we move the cutting piece so it's just going to touch the wood take a light cut on the as you move it and then just advance the cutting face forward. You only need to do about half a millimetre so at a time, you don't want to be taking big cuts and just take your time on doing it. Right, we've turned down to the line here and that's taken us roughly about where the pencil mark was. Now this jig is not quite big enough to allow me to swing right the way around this side to start with. So I'm going to have to move the jig along, take a little bit of this corner off so I can then get the, the swing around the, uh, the sphere as I need it.
and there we have the, uh, the turn sphere. Um, the only issue with this jig and the, uh, uh, like I said, a little bit of flexibility in this is you get slightly rough surface. So what we'll do next is just go over this very carefully with a uh, scraper, just doing a shear scrape, and that will just take the rough off, and we'll end up with a smooth surface. Now that I've finished turning the sphere, what we'll do is sand this to 240 grit. Then I'm going to use some Yorkshire grit, original and microfine, to finish the abrasive process. And then I'll apply three coats of Hampshire Sheen high gloss wax. So here's the finished clock, uh, all polished now. So the next stage is to make a base for it. I'm just going to use uh, an offcut of Spalted Beach. It's about 80mm square, 70mm deep, probably a little bit too too thick for uh, the base, so we'll actually lose some of this. I'm going to turn it cross grain again. So, first choice, mount it between centres, turn it round, decide which portion of the uh, wood I'm going to use, and then I'm going to put a tenon on what will be the base of the piece so I can mount it in the chuck and then turn the shape. Mounted the piece in the chuck now. I'm going to take a little bit off this top edge just to uh, even it off, and I'll probably go to about here so the, the base is only about this width. Uh, we'll see as I go, and that should capture most of this nice bolting feature here. Once I've uh, taken the bit off the top, I'm then going to hollow out this center section sufficient for the clock to sit into it and then we'll shape the rest of the base. So that's the base shaped, I'm going to sand this and finish it with uh, some Hampshire Sheen high gloss wax and then we'll part it off uh, where I've made the, uh, the cut here, um, finish the base off and then that will be the piece completed. And here's the finished piece with the completed base. There will be some close up pictures coming up after this, hope you found the video useful. And if you did, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and if you've got any comments or queries, just get in touch. Thank you very much for watching.